Доброго дня, шановні учасники конференції. Good afternoon, dear participants. Um, I'm uh, glad to welcome you. My name is Mondar Tetyana. I represent the Ukrainian Institute of Social Research. Today we will talk about teens and I will tell you about the experience of use of certain substances among Ukrainian teens. And if you want to ask questions, uh, please use the uh, the link to this session and you will join our zoom session where you can ask your questions if you just want to listen to the presentation you can see the main page of the conference so this is a conference for and about teens and now we will talk about teens we'll talk about some research studies focused uh, on uh, the teens uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, what uh, we talk about and we see the general comment uh, of the Committee on the Rights of the Child, which uh, contains uh, several uh, comments uh, for the general states uh, concerning the laws and regulations and services to be provided uh, to adolescents. So all those things are aimed uh, to protecting the rights of the child. So here we are talking about adolescents. And there were two studies uh, aimed at uh, at teens. The first one is uh, health behaviors for aged children. And here you can see the wave of uh, this uh, study. Uh, so the next one wave is planned in 2022. And uh, the next uh, one uh, is uh, the European School Survey based on alcohol and other drugs. So they were all based uh, on questionnaires uh, which were completed at schools and using individual envelopes uh, to ensure confidentiality. They were studies carried out in all the regions of Ukraine apart from uh, temporarily uncontrolled territories of our country. And uh, such a national sample allows to uh, give a full analysis uh, based on the age, gender, uh, type of uh, institution, uh, uh, type of family, level of income, etc. But not by regions. Uh, you can find the details, the information, and the international reports on our website. So, as for the health status of teens, before we start talking about uh, psychoactive substances, so this is a self reported health status. And we can see that uh, there is a growing trend in the number of boys and girls who assess their health as poor especially it is typical for girls because at this age they pay a lot of attention at their looks at their weight at how other people look at you so among girls uh, this uh, percentage is uh, higher and uh, of course it depends on the age so the bigger the age the bigger is the percentage of uh, uh, teens who assess their health as poor. Every fourth adolescent uh, in the last 12 months felt sad or helpless almost every day for two or more weeks uh, in a way that he or she couldn't perform uh, their daily duties. And among them, among the boys who felt sad or helpless almost everything. every third of them they assessed their health status as satisfactory so not poor not good but satisfactory every fourth of the, those respondents said that, that they were not very happy or totally unhappy so their health and uh, their mood were almost uh, at the same level. Also, in the last 30 days, uh, there is 
So there is a declining trend and declining number of people who uh, in the last 30 years never felt confident enough to resolve their own problems. So among those who are 10 years old, uh, there is a bigger percentage of uh, such girls and boys than when they are 16. And uh, uh, when uh, they are 15 years of age, uh, so among boys, uh, such percentage is 1.3 times higher than among the girls. And here we see access to psychoactive substances. And here we have some of the responses. Easy access and rather easy access. So there was uh, access to wine, beer, champagne, low alcohol beverage, and also hard alcohol. About 30% for hard alcohol. Then we can see cigarettes, marijuana, tranquilizers, amphetamine. So that's not a very high percentage, but still uh, those levels are significant and they show uh, that our school children also have access to such psychoactive substances. So on this slide, we talk about cigarettes, tobacco. And we have uh, almost stable access level of uh, 40 to 50 percent, and there is no big difference among boys and girls. So boys are in gray and girls are in yellow. So cigarettes are easily accessible to school children generally. This is a slide for the accessibility of alcohol. So how easy or difficult it is to access alcohol. So for 52 percent of school children, it was easy to get champagne. Uh, and this percentage is growing as compared to, to 2011. We had low alcohol beverages, uh, but uh, actually, in general, we uh, see a declining trend in the number of uh, children who, at such age, try to taste alcohol. So, of course, we are happy about uh, uh, those declining numbers, and of course, they are due to the efforts of NGOs and governmental organizations who try to protect the rights of children and adolescents. We see a rising number of those who use strong alcohol. I think that it is also due uh, to uh, some fashion. Uh, like, uh, for example, we have a fashion for champagne, wine, a prosecco among girls. Uh, so we see that more girls are, are trying to drink them. And also the same trend we see for the hard alcohol drinks. But also we see that teens try a hard alcohol and you know it is kind of a lifestyle for teens when they want to try gin or whiskey and we see a lot of advertising when where we see some cocktails which people drink at parties so children are attracted to those beverages and we see uh, that uh, these numbers are growing as for accessibility of marijuana or gashish, as you see, there is a stable level in uh, 2019 as compared to 2015, so about 12% of those who think that it is easy or rather easy to access marijuana, uh, but we see that in 2015, there were more for Ozyma, the respondents, thought that it was easy to access marijuana, but in 2019, there are almost the same numbers for boys and girls. So this is about smoking experience. Almost every other teen tried at least one cigarette or an electronic cigarette. 
but when you are asking about a lifetime experience you get one number but when we uh, talk about the last 30 days so we are asking have you been smoking uh, in the last 30 days then we see different numbers so for electronic cigarettes uh, there were about 12 percent 11.7 of those who were smoking electronic cigarettes in the last 30 days and if so if you we are asking the question have you ever smoked or have you smoked in the uh, last 30 days so we have we see a different uh, we see different uh, numbers uh, and should we we should be specific in our uh, yeah, the numbers that we want to see here we see information about smoking experience among teens of 15 to 16 years old it was an international study covering over 40 countries of the world and so teens uh, aged 15 and 16 years old, they were uh, the respondents of the survey. So that's what I've uh, talked about. We see that uh, there is a declining number of uh, teens who uh, try cigarettes and also of those who smoked cigarettes in the last 30 days. So we have here the comparison of the data for 2015 and 2019 so in 2015 ukraine ranked 11th uh, among all the countries and of course we see a bigger number for boys than girls here data for alcohol use so Still, we have uh, rather big numbers uh, of teens uh, who have experience of alcohol use. So, uh, in the lifetime, this uh, number is uh, over 85%. In the 12, last 12 months, 74.7%. And in the last 30 days, it's 46.5%. And every fifth, adolescent so 22.5 percent they used uh, uh, alcohol uh, for three days uh, or more in the last 30 days alcohol intoxication and here we see the dynamics of alcohol use among boys and girls aged 15 and 16 years old and we see that there is a growing trend among girls and a declining trend among boys among those who were drinking alcohol at least once in the last 12 months. As for the main reasons for alcohol use, uh, like almost 40% said that they just wanted to raise their spirits. They wanted to be in a better mood through alcohol. Over 20%, like 26.8 said that they wanted to resolve their inner problems 17.3 uh, percent wanted to get high and uh, 12.5 percent said that they wanted to feel approval from the side of other people and there was no big difference among boys and girls as for the substances and psychoactive substances so we uh, see that there is a growing number of those who tried uh, the psychoactive substances and here we see the year of birth on this graph as for the uh, holy drug use we see that 14 uh, there were 14 percent of those who used uh, two more substances and they were also engaged in gambling among those who practice holy drug use, there were more victims of bullying, like twice as many 
than among those who didn't use substances at all, there were more aggressors, 3.7 times more among those who used uh, two or more substances than among those who didn't use any substances. And also, we see that there are some growing numbers And uh, for some indicators, we see uh, that we go back to the indicators of 2007 and 2011, because there was a declining trend in, which was in uh, 2015. And here we talk about the boys and girls aged to 15 and 16 years old. So if we sum it up and if we look at the challenges and opportunities, so we can say that we have uh, easy access to substances, alcohol, cigarettes uh, for teens. Also, we see that girls, they are almost at the same level as boys, because uh, before, uh, among them, the experience of substance use was lower. And there is also um, stable trend of uh, reducing, reducing the number of those who uh, try smoking uh, during their life, lifetime. And since 2003, there is uh, a reducing trend uh, of alcohol use. Uh, cannabis use uh, is uh, also reduced. Uh, but in 2019, there was a stable level among girls and reduced number of uh, those who use cannabis among boys. Also, we have a stable trend for reduced uh, use of substances uh, in 2007. But in 2015 and 2019, we see a certain reduction of boys, but uh, rather significant growth among girls. As for the required steps, of course, we need to ensure multi-level cooperation among all the stakeholders, ensuring the protection of the rights of the child. Also, we need the development of programs for adolescents. And I think that among the participants of the conference, there are many people who represent such projects and organizations. Of course, we need to support monitoring studies, which would allow us to see the dynamics of uh, the use uh, of different substances, use of social media, bullying. So we need to continue those studies to see the dynamics and to see the response to the efforts which we are implementing. And of course, we need to have a system of monitoring indicators to access the situation, to understand the efficiency of our activities. So these are international national reports of HBSC. You can go to the web, national website of HBSC or to our uh, website and access them there. Also. We have international publications uh, of SPAD and uh, on their website or our uh, website. And there is a knowledge center where you can access a lot of uh, publications and data uh, to see what research studies are done, what publications are available, what programs and projects are implemented in our country, and not only in our country. So this is a platform for especially and experts who work with the marginalized uh, and vulnerable uh, teens and children. So this is our research team working with the uh, uh, social research studies. So of course, there are not just three of us. We have a bigger team, uh, but uh, uh, those are uh, the key member. So now, if you have some questions, uh, you can maybe ask them. We only have about one minute, like 50 seconds, maybe. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, uh, you are welcome to share them. It is important for our further work. Uh, 
I do not see any questions so far. Thank you, it was very interesting. So I see some feedback. Thank you too for your attention. So this presentation will be available in the materials session of the conference. So we will not be sending it to you right now, but organizers of the conference will share all the presentations with you later. Thank you, it was very interesting. It's your feedback and thank you for your participation and for attention to our sessions.